Exploration with Dr. Mishu Kaku, Tuesdays at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Progressive Radio Network. Welcome. This is Dr. Michio Kaku, Professor of Theoretical Physics at the City College and the Graduate Center of the City University of New York, and this is Exploration. Every week on Exploration, we discuss the fascinating world of science and its impact on society. And today, leading off, we're going to summarize some of the main stories in science. The first story is, did you know that on November 8th, mark that down on your calendar, a gigantic asteroid is going to come whizzing right over the planet Earth. No, it's not going to hit us, but it's going to come awfully close. And the question is, what else lurks in outer space that could really ruin your day if it lands on the planet Earth? And also, was Einstein really wrong? Last month, the Internet was abuzz with news that an experiment in Switzerland at the CERN accelerator showed that 15,000 neutrinos exceeded the speed of light. Well, in the past month, scientists have had a chance to mull over the news and they think there is a flaw in that study. In other words, perhaps Einstein has the last lap. And also, you've probably been following the horrible pictures and news coming out of Bangkok, Thailand, when the government is simply overwhelmed because of massive floodings and as a consequence, they've had to evacuate millions of people from that gigantic metropolis, crippling the economy. And the question is, is this a harbinger of things to come, given global warming? And also, this week, yes, this week, according to the United Nations, the population of the Earth exceeded 7 billion people. And there's good news and bad news concerning that fact. And so we'll go over what it means if there are 7 billion of us and the rate at which the population is expanding is slowing down, but the total number of people keeps rising. And then we're going to bring on our special guest today. He's Brian Dumain, and he's the author of a book with a rather controversial title, The Plot to Save the Planet. Well, he has a different point of view a point of view that we have not aired so much on exploration. And he thinks that, well, maybe corporations can be part of the fight against global warming. Not all corporations are bad, he claims, and perhaps some corporations might even do some good. Well, we'll bring on his point of view on exploration today. Well, let's just jump right into some of the top stories of the past week. The big story this week concerns an asteroid four times the size of an average football field that's going to be whizzing right overhead on November 8th in just a few days. And it's an asteroid that could really ruin your day. It's an asteroid that if it hit someplace on the Earth in a populated area would be classified as a city buster or if perhaps if it hit at the right angle and hit at the right time, it could even become a country buster, perhaps taking out England or a good chunk of France. The asteroid is called 2005 YU-55, not a very glamorous name. However, it was discovered in 2005, and it will come so close to the Earth that it will actually be inside the orbit of the Earth to the moon. So if the Earth to the moon, the distance is 240,000 miles, it will come about 200,000 miles from the planet Earth. However, it will not sail below our satellites. And the question is, how dangerous is it? Well, it was found in 2005 by accident, and many scientists are very elated by that fact, because usually asteroids this big, this close, we usually see after they've already skimmed past the planet Earth and they're back in deep space again. This is, in fact, historic. This is the first time that scientists will get a very close look at an asteroid of this size, this close, with advanced warning. 
So it was discovered by accident, and as a consequence, we know exactly its trajectory. It's being tracked by the gigantic radio telescope in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. And you could even see it with binoculars or a small telescope. It'll be whizzing right overhead at night, and it'll be so close that scientists have, for the first time, ample warning of an asteroid of this size. In fact, at the Arecibo Telescope, they've already begun to map the surface of this gigantic asteroid, about four football fields in length. And so it's a bonanza of scientific information. Also, President Barack Obama has announced that, well, we're not going to go to the moon. However, at some point, we may go to an asteroid. And if so, this is perhaps the best opportunity in many a decade to actually get a close-up photograph of an asteroid. And in some sense, instead of us going to the asteroid, the asteroid, in fact, is coming to us. We should also point out that even though this one will not hit the Earth, we have to look at what happens in a second pass. For example, there is the asteroid Apophis. The asteroid Apophis is potentially quite dangerous because it will skim by the Earth in the next decade and then come back in 2036, perhaps close enough to maybe even hit the planet Earth. Right now, computer simulations show that the chances of an impact of Apophis is still quite small. However, it is perhaps the closest call that we're going to be able to record with our instruments. And so once again, instead of going to the asteroid belt, maybe in some sense the asteroid belt is coming to us. Also, the world of physics was turned upside down last week when it was announced at CERN, outside Geneva, Switzerland, that 15,000 neutrinos exceeded the speed of light. Well, many physicists had a heart attack at that point because Einstein's theory is the foundation of modern physics. Almost everything you see around you, uh, the GPS system, modern electronics, lasers, is based on the work of Albert Einstein. And we would have to throw a lot of it out the window and recalibrate most of our theories. Recalibrate the age of the universe, the distance of the stars, the GPS system itself. However, now that scientists have had a chance to look at the data, they're saying, aha, maybe, just maybe we found a flaw. You see, these neutrinos went from Switzerland to Italy, and the distance was tracked by the GPS system. So some people are saying that's the weak link. The weak link is not the production of neutrinos, not the detection of the neutrinos. It's the measurement of the distance between Switzerland and Italy, about 450 miles in this particular experiment. And scientists are saying that, well, the accuracy of the measurement has to be 20 parts per million or 60 feet over a distance of 450 miles. It's very easy that they miscalibrated, for example, the distance between the Earth and the satellite. These calculations have to be done very carefully, and some people are already pointing out potential errors where perhaps, just perhaps, they made a mistake. This is important because, as I said before, not only would we have to rewrite all our textbooks, but most of the theories of modern physics go out the window, including the standard model and, for that matter, my own work. In my day job, I work on something called superstring theory. In fact, I'm the co-founder of string field theory. And as a consequence, because the theory is built on top of Einstein's work, most of my work goes out the window as well. Well, c'est la vie. I mean, physics is self-correcting. If that's the way physics goes, well, hey. That's the way physics goes. Also, if you've been seeing these horrible, heart-wrenching film clips coming out of Bangkok, Thailand, you get this weird sensation that perhaps you're looking at the future of the Earth, not just the future of Bangkok. Well, the government of Bangkok is new and it's overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the enormity of this calamity. Because of massive rainstorms, huge amounts of floodwaters are entering downtown Bangkok, forcing the evacuation of millions of people, denting the economy itself, closing one of the major airports in Bangkok. And you have to realize that maybe, just maybe, this is a hint of what's to come in the future. You see, global warming is in some sense a misnomer. It doesn't mean uniform warming of the planet Earth. 
No, it means shifts, radical shifts, swings in the weather. So in other words, in Texas, you could have a one in a century drought. And right next door near the Mississippi, you could have once in a century flooding.